wealth within. They gave me that feeling of trust. What you learned in the course was just mind-blowing. Amazing. It was phenomenal. It opens your mind up and makes you realise you don't know what you don't know. I've got the tools now. 100% worth it. Definitely get educated. Hello and welcome to Wealth Within's weekly hot stock tips. I'm Philip Tortevsky, Senior Analyst at Wealth Within, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now every Tuesday night, you can see me on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube, alongside two amazing professional traders, Janine Cox and Dale Gillum. Now in the show, we answer important questions around the stock market, cover lots of great stocks and help you become a better trader. Today we'll unveil what's hot and what's not for you, our viewers. But before we dive into this week's stocks, I am joined today by Dale Gillum. Good morning, Dale. Hey, mate. How you doing? Good. I'm good. A uh, lacklustre grand final weekend. Well, but, it was. Um, but I'm, not, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the next week from now on until it starts again. Yes. Well, but enjoy storm, the nice weather. Storm's in the grand final against yes. Penrith. So, yeah. So... There's one more week to go. It doesn't end. <laughs> it doesn't oh, end. All right, so let's get straight into it now. On your screen is a watch list of the top 200 ASX stocks. And I mean, Dale, we are seeing very big volatility and it is coming directly from the material sector, which was up around 9% last week. So, uh, well, look, it is. And to me, you know, it's, we've been saying materials, materials, materials for about three months that they, they're going to find some support and take off. Now we've had three weeks in a row they're up. Yes. So I was just I had to be cautious on that. One. <laughs> three weeks in a row. So it's not necessarily like oh now materials is up, but it looks like it, doesn't it's it? The first still sign. waiting. It's the first sign, a nice strong sign. What it did last week, so I do like it. Financials was down a little bit last week, but that's okay because there was some dividends paid, etc. But. And I had been running pretty hot up till then anyway, so a bit of an easing off is good. But I'm look, loving the look of the market at the moment. Well, it's very interesting. I mean, if we just look at the, the list through here, obviously it's a no-brainer. A Majority of the top 20 are made up of materials or mining stocks as we go through the list. I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to find anything else. A2 Milk found its way in there with a a really nice week. I mean, this one's been consolidating sideways for a little while, but starting to show signs. And if it can get through that $8, that looks really exciting. But um, moving on to the worst performance for the week, and obviously Star Entertainment Group not having the best time of it. Um, as we scroll our way through, some banks have made it in there. We've got some financials, Judo Capital, Commonwealth Bank, um, National Australia Bank. And that is the reason why, the, as you said, the financials were down about 4%. I mean, you had CBA, NAB, um, Westpac also the three biggest banks or three of the four biggest um, you know falling at around four five percent which um, you know is not uncommon we spoke about this because mm. it when you obviously the banks have been the one of the best performers so far this well, year well over 20 percent this year they mm. have right and um, we mm. talk about the way moves mm. unfold right so when a move unfolds in a uniform fashion and that generally um, shows itself in a series of higher highs, higher lows, mm. move, markets moving up, moving back down quite uniformly in that gradient rise, mm. um, giving us that signal that it is sustainable. Now, right now, the banks have experienced a nice run, are coming into that. That's what I think anyway. But, um, you know, if you see that really strong expanded move, we often say on this show, that is the time to be very cautious. So what's happening with the banks right now is actually quite a positive sign, especially if you are looking to get involved on that next wave up. Mm. Oh, I do. I mean, the old saying, you know, the market goes up in stairs and down in elevators. Mm. So if it's going up in an elevator, be then be, be, it's a big risk yeah. because it, until you, you know, it's like walking upstairs. Until you put your foot down, you don't know where support is. Yeah. So what's happening now with the banks, even though it was only last week, they're just putting their foot down to find out where the support is because what happens is you get that movement up and then you get some profit taking and movement up and you get... Also, the big end of town, they're the big buyers of these, so they don't want to see the price go too fast. So they see the price go up, and then they just ease off on their buying, which drops the price back a bit. Yep. Now, obviously, as I mentioned, yeah, CBA paid a dividend last week. It's part of the reason why it was down. But they've just eased off their buying at the mm. moment to allow the price to drift down because they need to get a good average price. That's what they're trying to do. Yes. So that's causing these up and down movements in the market. And at the moment, they look super hot. All right. Super hot. Brilliant. All right. So what's hot in the market this week while on your screen right now is my hot stock tip for the week, which is Iris Limited stock ticker code 
I-R-E. Now, as always, we've got the monthly chart on the left and the weekly on the right, Dale. But um, what's really uh, interesting about Iris for me, um, obviously, it's a no-brainer, this $9.15 level. It's been a very, very important level, if not the most important level for this stock since dating back all the way to 2007. You saw it act as resistance. But more to the point, the market does gravitate to this $9.16. It's been a bit of a, an agreement in price over the long history. And we've seen, you know, since 2014, it act as support for this stock. Obviously, we had the uh, fall through August 2023, which to me looked like a big blow off. But what's really exciting is that we come into support December 23 at around $5, which again was another strong level. We haven't marked it, but we've broken through the all important level of 916. We're on the flip side of it. And what's exciting right now is that I have marked a bit of resistance here, potential resistance at about $12, which at these levels presents still a fantastic opportunity. We've broken through long-term momentum. And these two arrows that we've got, um, sorry, long-term momentum in terms of that uh, momentum line we've got there, but these two arrows we've got uh, marked show the, I guess, strength in the move, because it's one thing coming out of a low, but it's how is the market doing it? Yeah. You know, is there really strong buying or is it just lackluster buying like we saw, you know, something through this period a little bit, then it starts to struggle. But what we're seeing coming out of the 2023 low is, and you can see it very clearly in the price, look how strong these two months were during November, and December, huge expansion. And rather than falling away, what it's done is it's consolidated and given us a next leg of expansion, even bigger than what we saw in November and or December and January, yeah. which was in uh, July. So now, considering we've settled down a little, which is not um, unsurprising, and we're still settling above this $9.15 level, I think if it can hold this level, upside to that twelve thirty or twelve twenty five is the next port of call. Mm. But if the strength is strong like it's showing now, which is, you know, very different to what we've seen all throughout this period with the extended volatility, I think we can, you know, approach that all time high uh, in the not too distant future with this one. Well I look I think you're correct. I mean there's twenty, thirty percent in the stock, you know, from where it is now, roughly ten dollars and obviously your first levels there is twelve dollars mm. so there's 20 at least 20 percent into this run so i do really love what you're, you're showing us at the moment and it's a nice it'll be a nice short-term run anyway but look at that this is the weekly chart now it's filled that gap sideways burst right up and at the moment we, then we got this big outside reversal bar but it stayed up mm. oh, i like it at the moment i think this one is super uh, super at the moment because with that consolidation through here, it's just showing you it doesn't want to fall away. It wants to go up. Yes. So, you know, if we do start seeing it move up this week, I like it. I think it's a great hot stock for this week. And especially if the market's going to be running because basically most of the trades for the market go through Iris. Yes. Because all the brokers are using the Iris platform, like Comsec is web Iris. So and biggest retail broker in Australia, all their trades go through Iris. So mm. if the market's getting hot, Iris will get hot. All right, well, that is it for my hot stock tip. Now we're moving on to a stock that should make you proceed with caution. Horizon Holdings, stock ticker code AZJ. Now on your screen, obviously, are the monthly and weekly. Now this one, Dale, it is a caution, but again, as we've been saying over the last couple of months, they're all bullish cautions because our market is humming along. And, mm. um, and this one really speaks to, I guess, what we've marked here is that $3.30 level, which again, has been a huge level of support for this stock for pretty much the whole history since it broke through in 2012, back in June through this period here. But we've seen a test in 16, test again in 20, and really find its feet and hold above this level all throughout, you know, 22, 23, 24. Now we're back here again. August, we came through to touch it, but Look at this, we've come through, we've found support, buyers have picked up some of these lows and we're starting to rise in September. So right now to me, it's a cautionary tale because it is, It's. I mean, when you're looking at stocks, it's the first thing to do is identify, is there an opportunity? Where is the stock placed? What's the story? And then secondly, it's about um, once you identify where it is, if it's at a level that is appealing yes. or, or presents opportunity, then it's about uh, overlaying your skills and your, your strategy to uh, eke out the risk reward return from that stock or make money from the stock in simple terms. So right now we're at that point where we've seen it um, hit very, very long-term support, but we trade on confirmation, not speculation. So Well, we do. And that's the thing is, and we constantly will say that about what I find is a lot of traders trade on speculation rather than confirmation, which is why they're a little bit hit and miss. And it's constant for us to get traders coming to us that are sort of 
they make money, then they lose a bit of money. They make money, so they're not really making a lot of money, but they're not really losing it. And they think they're doing okay, but you've got to get rid of some of that and then get that more consistency going, and that's where the confirmation comes into it. And when they start telling us what they're doing and they go, they're thinking, what they're thinking is confirmation, there's not confirmation. Yeah. It's just us going, oh, there's a little bit of interest there, but it's not confirmation. And so it's about taking the safe trades all of the time, not just some of the time. This is not a safe trade right now, but it could be in the next month. So that's why I think it's, exactly. what, I think I love it, being a bullish caution. I love that word. Yes, yes, it is. And it's definitely one to watch. The only thing I will add to this one mm -hmm. really quickly is just be mindful that it is in a sideways uh, pattern and it is bouncing off the top end at around $4. So but if that's you... just COVID. Like with mm. four years, we've seen the market. Yeah. And what I mean by the market, I'm not being just the stock market, I mean the broader economic markets they've been so subdued yes. because of you know supply demand issues all sorts of stuff here interest rates high etc etc Un et uncertainty, et about uncertainty, the virus. uncertainty about the virus and now there's constant talk about do we are we going to recession like whilst the governments don't like using the r word as i keep saying on this report we are in a recession we have been for so long so is the u.s that's the time you've got to buy anyway yeah. because every recession the market takes off so to me, this is the hot time in our marketplace. So if you're somebody that is unsure of the market and things worry you, then get an education. It really is. Knowledge is the enemy of fear. If you have a stock that goes down and you're fearful, that means you don't have enough knowledge. Great alarm bells. If that's happening to you, then get educated, whether it's getting my book or getting onto our courses. Just do it because you'll make so much more money in this next few years it is not funny. I, I am so excited about our market over the next couple of years. Oh, mate, great advice. Yeah. I totally agree. But um, moving on, lastly, what's not hot in the stock market this week? Well, Star Entertainment Group stock ticker code SGR. So, wow. I mean, let's get into the charts. It's entertaining right now. for being not entertaining, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, unfortunately. It's um, been falling away this one here. And, you know, it's not happened overnight. Uh, it's, it's been falling away for quite a long time since February 2018. But, you know, this there, is one of the ones where people would get stuck in that. Yeah, because, you know, you look at it and, and we, mm. whether you're that value type investor or you're trying or your mind is, mm. uh, because generally I think the default setting on the human mind is if it falls, it means it's cheap. So we should be Correct. buying, right? And whether that whether you do overlay some, um, you know, some basis behind that, that, like I said, with fundamentals, regardless, it's really the price. When it wants to go, you need to be watching um, mm. that moment, which you're only going to see on that chart, as we continuously say. But, you know, obviously since the March, and I'll zoom out the monthly chart here for you. Let me get through there, right on there. And obviously we had, you know, the big fall, which came through 2020 in March, which signaled the new all-time low for this stock. And, you know, trading through this period, this is why we say this is the risky part. Or if you're going to enact in here, you need to really have the right strategies because coming out of a significant low like that, really to me, I'm thinking only short term here. Because unless it breaks through those previous highs of 19, there is no long-term shift in, yeah. the, in the trend. So any of this would be super short-term, which requires a lot of skill. But it's no surprise it's come back and tested, you know, the start of that fall, continued to fall away. And it gave us a bit of a sideways-y type move through here, but gap down last, um, last week, actually, quite uh, extensively, down 44%. So, I mean... Stay away. But, I mean, to me, is you know that whole fall, and this is what a lot of people don't necessarily appreciate. This whole fall, even through here, all of this, there are people buying this stock all the way through because every stock that sold has a buyer. Yeah. Every stock that sold has a buyer, so people were buying all the way through here, and you got to think why. And I'm guaranteeing because it's dropped away last week to the answer down twenty four cents. People are going, oh, that's really cheap. I'll buy that. Mm. But what's cheap? You know, and if you if you continue to trade on what you think is cheap, you're just going to get burnt in the bum. Yeah. It really is. Don't buy cheap stocks because that is the surest way to lose a lot of money because they'll just keep falling on you and you catch falling nines. And when that happens, there's blood on the street. So yeah. it's I love this stock in terms of what you're talking about is stay away from stuff like this and go for better stocks that are starting to go up, that are giving you signs of support. And to me, the, the key criteria is all, number one is get direction right first. That's the first thing you have to do. And secondly, you have to get strength right. If you can get direction right, that'll cover a lot of issues. But uh, what I find is over 90% of people that tell me they're traders can't even get direction right, even though they think they are, because they're, they're trading in 
counter trend. So what they're trying to do is the thing will go up a little bit and they think it's now it's moving up when it's still moving down. Mm. Because just like we have stairs, you know, the market goes up in stairs and you've got to have a downward movement for it to go back up again. The opposite is correct for a bearish market. It has to move up a little bit to fall away again because the institutions are selling, but then they stop selling and let the price drift up a little bit for all these people buying cheap and then they start selling again because they want to average a better price. So stay out of the stock. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching this edition of Wealth Within's Weekly Hot Stock Tips. Now, remember to tune in to the live Australian stock market show on YouTube from 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. To find us, just type Wealth Within Live in the YouTube search. And remember to have your phone ready to call in live to speak to us so we can answer your questions. The number is 03 or you can email into the show right now by sending your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now, if you want a copy of Dale's first book, you can still get it for free. You just have to pay the shipping. You can order it from our homepage, wealthwithin.com.au. Now, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and thank you, Dale, for your excellent comments today. Well, look, that's my pleasure, mate. I, I really enjoy the show and we have a cracker of a live show on Tuesday night. So make sure you do check that out. But I do look forward to chatting with everyone tomorrow night on that show because we do have an absolute cracker, as I said. So, but thank you. I've enjoyed it once again. Thank you very much again. And yes, we do have a very good show coming tomorrow. So please check it out. But uh, thanks again, Dale. And thank you, everybody, for watching for now. Goodbye, good luck and good trading.